What's up everybody, I am Jason C here at the Master Drum Whiskey Room. Back in 2015, Luxco unveiled the ultra premium Blood Oath bourbon brand with the launch of Blood Oath Pack Number 1, which is a blend of Kentucky straight bourbon whiskeys aged between 6 to 12 years old. So six packs, many different blends and finishes later. The newest Blood Oath is here, the twist this time. This is a blend that includes an eight-year-old bourbon finished in Sauternes casks. Sauternes is a sweet wine from a town in the Bordeaux region of France. Let's see if that Sauternes finish makes the Pack 7 a must-buy today on the Mash and Drum. As I mentioned, Blood Oath was created in 2014 by Luxro Master Distiller John Rempe, who had an idea to make a delicious blend of Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey using three very unique bourbons. He named the series Blood Oath because he vows to be the only one who knows where these whiskeys have come from and promises to make each release, each pact, very exceptional. Luxco itself was founded in St. Louis in 1958 by the Lux family. Luxro Distiller is now located in Bartstown, Kentucky, is now the home of Luxco's bourbon portfolio, including Ezra Brooks, Rebel, David Nicholson, Davies County, and of course, Blood Oath. Creating an extraordinary, unique blend of Kentucky straight bourbon whiskeys is at the heart of the Blood Oath series, says John Rempe. Pack 7 continues this tradition, and the result is a secret I can't wait to share with bourbon lovers. All right, so the new Blood Oath 7 features a combination of three Kentucky straight bourbon whiskeys, a 14-year rye bourbon, an eight-year rye bourbon, and an eight-year rye bourbon finished in those Sauternes cask, which I mentioned earlier is a sweet wine from the small town of Sauternes in the Bordeaux region of France. So I did a little research. I don't really think I have ever had a just a straight Sauternes wine <laughs> uh, from France. So I did a little research, and typically Sauternes is supposed to have heavy notes of honey apricot, caramel, sometimes coconut mango, and citrus. Uh, some tropical fruit can get in there with some baking spices. Sounds like it could go great in a bourbon. All right, so the final stats here, the Blood Oath Pack 7 label is similar to the previous ones, as you see, but the color selection for this one is using a French blue theme. This is available now with a limited allocation of only 5,100 bottles, 1,400 of which will be held for a future trilogy pack release. Now, the first trilogy pack features packs one, two, and three. That was released in 2018. The second trilogy pack featuring packs four, five, and six will be released later this year. This is bottled at 98.6 proof or 49.3% ABV, has a suggested retail price of only 100 bucks. Let's try it. This has an absolutely beautiful nose for bourbon. I'll tell you that. It's got the sweet, rich oak. It's chocolatey. I get, I don't know, maybe because I'm hungry, but I get like chocolate chip cookie dough on the, on the nose of this. Really, really nice. There is like a butterscotchy ice cream thing going on as well. It's very sweet. So when I first poured this, the first pour, this is about the fourth pour I've had. The, the first pour I ever took from this, I wasn't really getting any sort of sauternes. I, I was looking for like this peach, this honey. I wasn't really getting that at all. And I, I gotta say, to be honest, I'm not really getting it too much on the nose here still. There might be a slight like grapey note there, but it's so like vanilla ice cream heavy to me and chocolate chip cookie dough that it's it's uh, it's kind of masked underneath all that. I mean, for me personally. All right, let's go for a sip. Let's see how it is. Mm. More sweet oak. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Man, if there's a finish on there, it's very faint, but I get more of the cookie dough on the palate, more molasses. 
For a 98 proofer, it has a really nice spice point to it as well. It's a, there's a nice little uh, baking spice, punch of cinnamon, black pepper there. Hmm. All right, let's go for another sip here. Let's see if we can pick up some of that sauternes finish. Here we go. All right, so second sip. I mean, the sauternes finish is just, I mean, it's barely there for me. I am getting this little bit of, I'm not sure if it's apricot or peach. I am getting like a honey and, and a, like a slight grape note but it's really on the back edge of the palate before the finish kicks in. You get the wave of chocolate, cookie dough, the molasses, the dark sweet oak. And then as it works its way back, I mean, the spice starts kicking in. And then right before the finish hits, you get this little burst of, like to me on these on that sip, was grape and honey. So let's see if it starts coming through a little bit longer here. Yeah, the slight finish, the, the finish for me is so slight. It's on the very, very back edge of the palate, right before the finish kicks in. Now the finish, you're getting more of the molasses, the cinnamon, good spice, good sweet oak, beautiful sweet oak and molasses and, and vanilla cream and ice cream and cookie dough. That's all just taking over the palate. You don't get like this grape honey. I mean, there might be an apricot in there. Apricot, apricot. Again, I never know how to say that damn word. Uh, that's kind of, I don't know, overtaking everything. Let's go for another sip here. And then we're gonna compare it to last year's, uh, which is my favorite, which is the cognac uh, finish one uh, from pack six. So let's go for a sip. Okay. Just takes a little time, guys. And for me, this is the typical experience I've gotten with most of the Blood O's, except for maybe a couple, especially the finished ones. So this is pack five, which was the rum cask finish which for that one, I did feel like I, I had the rum or tasted the rum right away. But as that thing got even lower, like right now it's about a little bit less than halfway down. The rum characteristic in that is strong. Uh, the pack six, I felt like I wasn't getting the cognac right away either, but as it worked its way down the bottle, the cognac became more and more prevalent. I think this is what's gonna happen too, because the more I sip this, the more it gets some air, the more, you know, I'm starting to get a little bit more of the grape, a little bit more of the, the honey is coming through as well. Um, there is a, getting a slight hit of coconut, I think coming through a little bit too. Go for one last sip here. Yeah, for sure. So for me, front of the palate, molasses, sweet oak, a little bit of black pepper there. Uh, you get a lot of vanilla, a lot of that ice cream, a little butterscotch too. As it works its way back, the baking spices kind of take over, the cinnamon uh, comes in a little bit, more of the sweet oak, more of the molasses, and then right before the finish happens, you get this little burst for me of coconut, you get some of that, uh, a grape note, like a nice sweet grape, and a little honey I think is there, kind of wrapped around that too. On the finish, spicy, has a good spice to it, really great balance. A um, little bit more of that chocolate comes through, a little more of the baking spice comes through as well. Very nice sweet oak. And the only, I guess, ding I'll give to this bourbon is it's a little bit drying. I'm, I keep going back for sips because I feel like it's drying my palate out a little bit and I want to keep going back for more. But it is a very, very sweet bourbon. I mean, if you like candy and ice cream and all that stuff, um, I think as more as this opens up and the more of those fruit flavors come into play here from the sauternes, I think it's gonna end up being more of a desserty type of uh, bourbon. So let's compare it to last year's and see how it stacks up. All right guys, so now we have the Blood Oath Pack 6, which is what we're gonna compare to Pack 7 here. This is one of my favorite releases that they ever did in the pack in the uh, Blood Oath series. Uh, I will say this is also 98.6 proof. Now this had a 14 year old bourbon in the blend, followed by an eight year bourbon, and then a seven year bourbon that was finished in a cognac cask. So. It'll be an interesting, you know, uh, comparison here. Might not be too fair because the pack six, as you see, has a lot more air time, a lot more air in the bottle, which I think is helping those cognac flavors come out a little more. But it'll be interesting to see how it compares just flavor wise with the uh, pack seven. So let's go to the nose on the pack six. Man, so on the pack six, this is a rich, dark, sweet oak, a lot of molasses, brown sugars, this is more into like the leather, like sweet tobacco category where it's just a little bit darker and duskier, not as sweet as what I'm getting in pack seven. 
but I could smell on the nose here the type of you know the the, the cognac influence here those uh, like those deep rich like grape brandy notes that come through yeah it just it just smells darker and duskier than uh, than the pack seven the pack seven God the pack seven just comes off the more it opens up here it's like candy all right let's try the uh, pack six and we'll compare Oh, I love pack six so much. Pack six is probably easily my favorite one besides pack four, which I think was the toasted, the toasted cask one they did. I think it was so good. So, well, interesting though, actually. Wait, one more sip to make sure this is what's happening here. Man, John Rempe is a freaking mad scientist. <laughs> so I'm kind of getting the same experience, actually, that I'm getting here. On the uh, on on the pack seven, the only difference is I could smell the cognac on this, where I can't smell the sauternes on that. Unless unless the sauternes and my lack of experience with sauternes, that's just my that's what's making this overall sweeter on the nose. But I think the older bourbon in the pack six is also making a big impact, and I could really smell the cognac notes on the nose on this. But I'm getting kind of the same experience here that I'm getting in pack seven up front. It's dark, it's musty, it's dusky, it's get, I'm getting the, uh, you know, the baking spices, I'm getting the dark chocolate, the molasses, the leather, all those great, like, just rich, sweet oak notes. It works its way back, you know, getting more brown sugars, the baking spices kick in, and then, again, right before the finish, I get this burst of brandy and cognac and grape and, uh, the uh, like the the dates and the raisin, the ra the dark chocolate like covered raisins is what really jumps out to me right before the back end. I'm getting that kind of same experience here, but with the Sauternes cask. All right, let's go for a sip here and compare. Man, when you just kind of sit and just let it just sit on the palate, there's a lot going on in both of these. I think that the the uh, the pack seven is kind of giving off the same experience as the pack six where. It's a lot sweeter up front. The, the vanilla, the chocolate chip cookie dough, the you know the, the chocolate, the, the molasses, all that is working itself into play. But again, right before the finish, there's that little burst of just a, man, again, I'm getting the, the honey and coconut. I just keep getting this big burst of coconut right on the back end. And then the finish starts. It kind of gives you a little bit of that drying aspect to it. I will say the pack seven is coming off a little bit more drying than the pack six. One more sip of each. Man, I love the pack six. I just love that dark, rich component that it brings. And I love those dusty, like musty, funky notes in a, in a bourbon. And not only does an old bourbon have that, but you get a really good cognac cask, a good cognac. Uh, if you've ever had a really good cognac or armagnac that has those type of notes to it, it definitely, there's an influence there on the pack six. All right, one more sip of the pack seven. Yeah, the Sauternes, I think, is starting to make more of a presence here. It's still very faint, it's not strong, at least right now. Who knows what happens when it gets about halfway down the bottle. But I think there is a presence there. I think overall, the Pack 7 is a sweeter experience than Pack 6 was. It's a little bit more uh, sugary sweet, it's a little bit more vanilla ice cream, chocolate chip cookie dough, as I mentioned. It's got the, it's got the coconut, the honey kind of happening right on the back end with all the great flavors of a really nice well-aged bourbon. Another great blend from, uh, from John Rempe. Let's go to the final breakdown and I'll tell you my final thoughts. All right guys, so for MSRP, the price on this is $100. Uh, as we go to secondary market value, I see this around 200 and 225 already being sold on the secondary. Uh, when it comes to availability, this is limited as most blood oaths are. Like I said, there's only a little bit over 5,000 bottles for this with 1,400 being held back uh, for a future triple pack release. So um, if you see these uh, or and you're interested in them, remember they are limited. All right, so when we come to value, I think the value on this is actually good. I think when you talk about value in today's market, remember this has a 14 year, an eight year, and an eight year bourbon that's finished in Sauturn casks, uh, all in this blend. When you go back to Blood Oath Pack 6, that has a 14 and 8 and a 7 year, so the Pack 7 actually beats it by one year. But if you're talking about MSRP, I think from a, uh, from a value standpoint, at only $100, if you could find it for $100, or even cheaper, I've seen it in some markets, it's a damn good value. What's the most I would pay for this? 
I don't know, being that there's a 14 year old bourbon in here and an eight and an eight, and you're getting a really nice finish, plus it's being blended by John Rempe, you get the nice packaging. You know, you have to, you know, as much as you want, you have to factor all that in. And I don't know if you guys notice another little tidbit about this release. Uh, we actually get a nice wood little topper here. There's a nice wooden topper uh, when you compare it to just the straight up cork that was in the last releases. So I'm not saying it makes a big difference, but it does maybe make a little bit of a difference when you're buying something a little bit more premium. I would probably go up to 150 for this, knowing there's a 14 year old in there, but I probably wouldn't go any higher than that. Uh, do I recommend this one? I think I would. I, I love this bourbon. I think it's absolutely delicious. I think it's sweet. It's balanced. It's a beautiful blend. Now, remember, you have to go in with the notion that you're not going to get the Sauternes finish, I think, right away. I mean, maybe you will. Maybe, you know, a lot of people's palates are different. I'm not getting it right away, especially on my first few pours. But pour a glass, let it sit open. And then I think they just start to come to the forefront a little bit more, or you get that nice little burst of the, uh, of the, of the honey and that coconut flavor I was getting right in the very, very back end. I think the more you just give this some time, the more it seems to be worth it. And the more it starts to all those flavors in the sauternes and the blending, uh, you know, the, the blending power of John Rempe comes to the forefront. So yeah, if you see this at MSRP or maybe just, just over MSRP. I think it's a good value, damn good blend, getting some nice ultra-aged bourbons. Definitely give it a go. All right, guys, well, hope you enjoyed this review for the Blood Oath Pact 7 uh, from Luxco. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Let me know if you've had this. Let me know if you did have this, if that saw turns characteristic, if that finish took a little time to come to the forefront like it did for me. Uh, let me know if you got it right away. Always interested to uh, hear you guys. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. So cheers. And I'll see you next time right here on the Mastin' Drum. Take care, everybody.